Electricast. There's a change happening in the way we live, the way we work, the way we spend our money and make our decisions. We are evolving to be more conscious in our actions in a way that serves the world and makes it a better place. Welcome to The Ethical Evolution. The Ethical Evolution podcast is brought to you by Ethical Change Agency. I'm Bindi, I'm the founder, and my mission is to help ethical entrepreneurs and holistic healers to find their voice through spiritual coaching and podcasting. I'm honoured to bring you the stories of those who create change through healing, kindness, innovation, purpose, and spirit. Understanding that to create collective change, we need to be the change. It all begins with us. Lauren Robbins, the double vision medium, is a renowned award-winning endorsed psychic medium, author, and spiritual teacher. Based in Massachusetts, just outside of Boston, Lauren provides readings and healings, along with assistance with bereavement and paranormal investigation. She's worked with many celebrities all over the world and has appeared on TV and in documentaries. When I found Lauren on Facebook, of all places, I instantly knew I had to speak to her and we could read each other's energy straight away, knowing that we'd met one of our people and when we spoke, it felt like I'd known her for an eternity. This was one of those encounters where you walk away truly changed, and I hope this incredible conversation helps you also believe. Welcome, Lauren, to The Ethical Evolution. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Thanks. Me too. Uh, now, we know that there's no happy accidents in life. We were, we were meant to meet, um, and uh, we actually stumbled across each other in a, in a Facebook post of all places, um, and um, so glad that I did, and I, I know I was meant to find you there. But for people who don't know who you are and what you do, can you uh, go ahead and tell us? Sure. Um, so I'm a um, tested and endorsed psychic medium and afterlife research medium for science, an author and a spiritual teacher, and um, kind of always had the gift since I was two years old after actually being diagnosed with um, permanent double vision um, after a brief illness. So it's just something I've always had and grown up with, and it's been a very interesting journey. <laughs> mm. I mean, how do you get on with the double vision? Uh, well, I always say it's kind of funny. I say when I have a couple of drinks, I see one. So that's not a bad thing, right? Um, but with the double vision, I'm just used to it. I've had two eye surgeries and um, it's been challenging, but it never kind of held me back. I just have always been a fighter because of it. And I remember when I was in second grade, I don't know why I was with my mother at a teacher's conference, but they said, oh, you know, don't expect anything of her or to make to go, her go to college because um, she has a double vision. She has mm. this wild imagination. She's talking to like people in the closet. And I was actually talking to ghosts in the closet. <laughs> and um, I just remember hearing that and just saying, "Uh, uh-uh, that's not me. I'm going to I'm going to make it. And I was only, you know, what, seven years old, eight years old at the time. So. That's incredible. And, you know, that's yet another thing that you and I have in common. I was also born with turned eyes. Um, I had surgery when I was about two. Um, so, yeah, most people can't tell nowadays, but sometimes it does uh, rear its ugly head. But, um, yeah, it's another thing um, that we've got in common. So that's that's incredible. Um, well, two and then double and, – and I also, you know, I've had a lazy eye because of the double vision also. Mm. My eye turned in and so I've had corrective surgery. So that's really kind of cool. That's another synchronized thing right there. Yeah. Yeah. Now, um, oh my gosh, there's so many questions I want to ask you and I, I reckon I could talk to you all day. I already know this. Um, so um, you, uh, as you said, have been tested uh, for your accuracy as, as a psychic. Um, tell us a bit about some of the things that you've unearthed for people. Okay. So I've been actually tested and endorsed for psychic and mediumship um, because I've always kind of known both you know, the physical world and the spiritual world. And I was, um, a lot of people asked, it was actually interesting. Somebody wrote on a post today, like, how are you tested? And it's not a very common yeah. thing, to be honest with you, because like there's a lot of, you know, professionals out there and big na- names out there too um, that haven't gone through testing stages. But um, it ended up being like, I wanted to make sure that if I'm going to be out there and do this work, that I was good at it and that I was really 
could be validated. And so um, it kind of stumbled upon me that I talked to research, uh, uh, a scientist uh, close to seven, eight years ago. And he said, well, if you want to work for me on my program to prove the afterlife, I've got to, I've got to test you. And I said, okay, sure. What does that entail? And he said, you know, I'm going to have to talk to a couple of people over the phone. You're not going to know who they are. You're going to have to do mediumship. So I did that with him and um, I passed. And then I did it like with uh, a couple other uh, professional places and listings that I'm on. And I passed them as a medium, but also as a psychic. Um, but I have so many stories. I don't even know where you want me to start, but it's just been like, to me, that was one of the biggest things for me is to say, like, I am a legit person. Mm. And I know that there's a lot of people out there that are legit, but there's also some people that are out there that are beginners and they, you know, they come across as legit. And sometimes, you know, so it's a very hard industry. And, um, and I just want to be like on top of my game always. So like, if people are going to choose somebody and they come across me, they can kind of trust me that yeah. I've gone through those stages. And it was really hard because honestly, if I blew it, then I wasn't, I wouldn't be doing that at all. Cause I'd never go out there and charge a dime. But, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, but anyway, I don't know where you want me to start, but I got so many awesome stories, but. Yeah. I mean, know. I guess, you know, if there's one that can stick out for you of, of something that, you know, from particularly, I don't know, psychic medium um, that you've told someone and then it's occurred to the point that it's really changed their life. Okay. Uh, well, there was a, um, there's a couple of big ones that I'll, I'll never forget. And um, there was a, uh, and I've said these in, before uh, a couple of times in the past, uh, just talking to different people, but there was this one that strikes, a couple that strike me and there was, it was about 10 years. I've had my practice since 2007. So we're going into 15 years now and uh, professionally. And I had a young woman that was trying frantically to come see me and her car was broken down and she was, I, um, she had a drug addiction issue. And um, I actually was dating somebody that lived in the ear where she was. And I said, I'll go get somebody to come get you to me. Cause I really want to talk to you. And, um, she managed to get a ride, but anyway, she came to me and went on my healing table. I'm also a Reiki master teacher, so I still offer that, and I'll channel information. I'll talk to them from the other side, and so I started doing some healing on her because she needed help with her addiction, and I said, you're pregnant, and she said, how'd you know? I said, I'm a psychic, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and I said, you know, this baby is going to change you you need to have this child. And I, and I'm hearing the baby say, please don't abort me. I'm going to change your life for the, be uh, for the better. Wow. And she said, you know, she said, I haven't told anybody. I just found out. And um, she was struggling with the addiction, of course. And I just, I, and she, I had different people were trying to tell her to abort the baby. And she had all kinds of people giving her different opinions. And I said, this child is telling me it's going to change you. Please have the child. And so she ended up going through full term and got off of drugs. And now she is um, a mother of three and she's married and she got off of drug addiction and she's doing really, really well. And over the course of the years, we've stayed in touch. She'll like send me some messages or uh, what have you. But it's really nice to see that it, she it, that, ch that child did change her life and got her off of drug addiction. So that was a big one. Um, and then I have there was a. A very tragic accident um, that was in my town, um, south of Boston, and um, my husband's a firefighter. At the time, we were dating, and um, he was first on call to the scene, and it was very bad. A, a young boy was hit by a, uh, a school bus, and um, I just felt so compelled to reach out to the dad. And because my husband said, you know, the next day he wasn't supposed to work; he was in for an overtime. He was not feeling well. I was coming down with a fever, but he just didn't want to back out of working. So he was in there covering uh, somebody else's shift. And the gentleman that lost his son walked in and said, was there anybody that was on yesterday? And they said, oh, yeah, you know, John was. He says, can I talk to them? Talk to him. And he and uh, so he spoke to my husband and he said, you know, thank you for being there for my son. I mean, this is a man that just lost his child. Yeah. I mean, yeah. really. And my, my husband just said, I just want you to know I was always there, you know, with your child through the whole thing, you know, even though the boy was gone. 
And the ironic part was I felt this, I felt so pushed by spirit. You know, you've got to reach out to this man. You've got to reach out to this man. So I found him on Facebook and just said, I know you don't know me. I don't know if you believe in mediumship, um, but I want to tell you that if you need anything at all, you know, just reach out to me. I'm in town. This is my address. So um, I recognized, you know, I saw his picture, of course, on Facebook and maybe a month had passed and I was leaving my practice space and I walked out to go into my car and I noticed this man and he looked familiar. And I said, geez, that's this boy's father. I mm-hmm. recognize him. He was walking right past my practice. At the time I was on ground level and I had a sign and all that. Um, just said like professional medium and some of my stuff in the window and he stopped in front of my window and was looking in and I was in my car watching him. And I put my window down and I said, you know, are you so-and-so, I don't want to say his name, but I said, are you so-and-so's father? And he said, yes. And I said, I sent you a message um, to tell you that I would help you if you needed help. And he said, and so I said, your son said this, and this is what happened. Um, And this was his experience. And he said, oh my God, he starts crying in the street. And I said, listen, why don't we go into my office, you know, be, you know, I don't want you being out in the street, like, so you can have some confidence. And it can be, you know, keeping confidential and private. We went in and we prayed together. And I told him what happened. To, I could see from his son's eyes what had transpired mm. and how he was killed because he was looking at a particular thing. And his father said, yes, he knew what that was. And he lost his balance and got off of his bike and got hit by the bus. And the father was aware of some of these things and other things that I told the father about the boy's personality. I never met this child. And so it was just weird how it was linked to my husband, my boyfriend at the time. But I became very good friends with this father. And this was his only child. Wow. And I said to him, I'm going to teach you how to connect to your son. Because, you know, parents that lose their children, it's horrible. It's so devastating. A lot of times they're very suicidal. He mm-hmm. was not. But we prayed together. I had him come in for months. Every month I had him come in and I was talking to him. I said, you've got to do this. You've got to relax. You've got to trust. You've got to pray with me. And we did. And now he can communicate with his son. And because of him and I, I created a class that my niece pushed me to finish. And because of this father, and it's called Until We Meet Again, and I've taught dozens and dozens of students how to raise their vibrational state and connect to their loved ones so they could heal. And that's not something that most people can just do off the cuff. Yeah. But that was a profound story because I ended up being so much friend. I became close to this person, this father. And um, I actually told him that he was going to find a woman. He wasn't married to the mother of this child. And I said, you're going to find a woman with short brown hair. She's, you're going to fall in love and you're going to get married in like six months. And he said, no way, no way. It's not going to happen. He was like, Mr. Bachelor. And um, sure enough, he's like, hey, can I come in for an appointment? I said, sure. He goes, guess what's going on, Lauren? I'm like, <laughs> what? He goes, I found this woman of my dream. She's got short brown hair. We're getting married in like April. Will you come to my wedding? I'm like, yes. Oh wow. And he married her. And they like she just helped him to heal with this his son's loss. And so those are like big, I have a lot of big stories, but they just I say to myself, thank you, God, you know, for my gift, because it actually is one of the biggest and hardest jobs ever because nobody believes in us. Yeah. Most people don't believe in us. And that's one thing I have a hard time overcoming because People are literally like either they either love me and like, oh, my God, it's just like a medium. I want to know everything. Or they're like, oh, my God, you know, is she going to read me all the time? And, you know, so it's it's a really tough job and industry to be in. Yeah. And uh, I think this is the third thing we've got in common um, is that just in the last couple of years, I've started to get kind of medium messages as well. And they're just like they're just they make so much sense now. Like um, just, I got one yesterday actually for a friend of mine who lives in Los Angeles and I messaged her and I said, oh, I got this message for you. And, you know, at the time when they come through, I don't quite know what they mean, but then when I then shared them, they make sense. So um, it, all it was was um, do something for yourself today, must have water. She came back to me and I hadn't spoken to her in weeks and she'd come back and she said, I am so dehydrated. I'm going to go have some water now. And I was—I <laughs> knew that all the way from here in Brisbane <laughs> that that was for her. So wow. this this happens all the time, and I'll just things will come through, and then I'll send it to someone, and they'll know exactly what it means when I send it. But I didn't know 
at that time and then it's just incredible and it, it keeps happening to me and I, I trust in that. So it's having that that intuition and that trust in spirit and having, um, you know, the ability to understand what it actually means and, uh, you know, to the, to the lay person they would probably think we're a little bit crazy and um, we don't know what we're doing <laughs> but when they actually trust in it, it can change your life. It definitely can. And it sounds like what's happening to you is you're getting a lot of psychic insight because that will be with the physical world. So mm. if it's something like just coming in, that's coming from your higher self to either give to somebody else or, or for somebody uh, for yourself or somebody else. But what's interesting is like, I was just talking about this last night to some students, you know, when you're natural, like you can develop at any age, you don't have to start when you're a child, you could be something could have major happened in your life that just switches, you know, that light switch on. And you can develop in your 40s, 50s, 60s, Mm. 70s, it doesn't matter. But it comes when you least expect it. That's the interesting part about psychic work and mediumship. We're not like sitting there trying to to get messages all day long. It just comes, you know, um, just and you, comes sporadically and you know well, like I mean obviously when I have sessions I've got to like get to that place to get the information for the person but outside of that they just come in yeah and I think where the penny dropped for me was um I'd always get them in the same place like geographically um and it was right next to a cemetery um and I was like oh okay I know what's happening now um and it was always at the same place I was like when I drive past I'd be like I'd get all these messages and I was like Oh, okay. <laughs> so that's mm-hmm. when I understood that there was something bigger going on here, um, which leads me into asking you about the paranormal and the afterlife um, work that you do. Um, tell me a bit more about that. Oh, I love all that. Oh, it's, I can't like get it. You know, I love it all. Um, well, so the afterlife work I do is started off with that research, um, working for the program. It's called Voices Across the Veil. And with that, I have to like, I have to read like all the people that are in the group. Um, And uh, like, there's a scientist that records all that data. And I've been doing it for him for seven years. And he's going to eventually release all of that. And like, it's very, you know, it's all evidential. It's all about, you know, validating everything that I'm getting for people. Um, So that I'm very big into the afterlife for it, not just as a medium, but I've gotten pictures too. Eventually I'm going to have a book called me, myself and them Mm. because I've gotten pictures. I have this picture of um, a whole face of my son's great grandfather right behind my face and in a car window, like the whole face, the eye sockets, the nose, the mouth, and that's going to be the cover of the book. Um, But I got, I got fascinated with the paranormal. Um, The afterlife I think is so cool because there's different parts of it. There's, you know, people that have crossed into the light and those are like the spiritual beings that I speak to when the client, like I had clients tonight that came in for mediumship sessions. I don't want to know who they're trying to connect to because a real legit person in my industry is not going to ask. And so it's always interesting when it comes in and they come in on their own, they give me their personality, they give me the, sometimes their name, they give me the pain in their body because I'm a physical medium and only things that are going to make sense to them. But then they say, oh, this is where I am now. This is who I'm with. I've crossed into the light or I haven't. So I find that fascinating because it's always like, I don't even know what's going to happen. I just channel that information. So I love the reading part, but I also like taking pictures And I've gotten some interesting pictures with going to graveyards. My poor son still traumatized from Halloween when he was little and be like, go there and shut all the lights off and be like, hey, we're going to take some pictures. Like, what, mom? (laughs) And I'd get like orbs and I'd see like ghost figures coming up and things like that. So that's cool. But the paranormal really started, you know, I'd say about 10 years ago, there were a couple of paranormal teams locally to me that came to me that wanted to be trained like in Reiki and to understand, be more sensitive to energy so they could pick up ghosts. And I got really fascinated by them because they started showing me like what orbs looked like in some of the pictures. So I started taking my own pictures and um, I've had, I've, I've got, you know, for some reason I'll say, you know, show up for me and I, I'll get, I'll get pictures. And um, it led me like to the same thing with Facebook and forums that I was on a forum um, maybe seven years ago, and I, I met a gentleman that had a, a paranormal team in Syracuse, New York, 
And I was like, I was talking to him I'm, and he's like, I'm going to these investigations. I want to help. And I'm talking to him remotely mm-hmm. and I'm saying, oh, in the back right corner of the house is going to have the most activity. And it's a boy and his name's Justin or Jason. He died in a fire in 1796. It's just like an example, very close to that. I told him they did the research and there was a fire and there was a, and I'm, I'm here, I'm doing this remotely. And I'm like, how am I doing this remotely? <laughs> so like, it just, like spirit is so interesting. So paranormal is the ones that are stuck that never cross into light, that need assistance. Sometimes they're good, sometimes they're bad. And then the, you know, the loved ones on the other side completely transcended. But I find it all fascinating in my work. I really just think it's amazing and it's cool. And I love talking to all of those forms and I can, so I Mm. do. (laughs) And, you know, it's incredible. I think probably the closest thing I've come to that was – I um, visited a historic convict jail um, down in Tasmania where some of the first convicts in Australia um, were were housed and there was a women's prison and I went in there and I swear to God, I had to walk straight out. Like the energy in that room, like it was just like it took my breath away. I was just like, I have to get out of here. Bad things have happened in this room (laughs) and I just had to leave. Um, like I, I, the thing that I get is I'll go and there's a massive historical church here in Brisbane as well. I went into, and I just, you know, can you go into a space and you go, I know something really significant has happened here. Not sure what it is, but I know something big has happened in this space. Do you, I know you probably get a lot more detail, um, from the energy that you pick up. I do. And you know, what's interesting is like when you pick that up and if it felt like it was overcoming you, and that usually means it's very bad in there. And so like I, you know, I've gone into some, I've done clearings in people's houses. I've gone into, like I'll, I'll select only certain cases. I have to be very careful, you know, so I'm not too exposed to that. But, um, you know, I've gone into houses where like I can feel like it's a demonic entity because yeah. it's so bad. Like it, I feel nauseous and sick or I got a metal taste in my mouth or um, I've been pushed. I've been bitten. I actually um, went into somebody's house and they were having a lot of problems and they the demonic entity bit my ankle. Oh and my so God. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm not even kidding. Like they can do that. And I, I was like, you have demonic entities in here. And I was trying to clear them out and they didn't want to have me clear them out. And all of a sudden I felt like this, like, like something grabbed my foot, my, th- my ankle. And um, I said, I got to go home. Cause I, I said to my husband, my poor guy is just like this normal guy. I'm yeah. like, um, you know, if, if I start acting weird <laughs> coming out of it, you've got to tell me to get in the bathtub. Oh, and wow. I started feeling weird. Like I wasn't myself. And that meant like it was trying to a- a- affect me. Wow. So um, that's like, you'll know if it's bad by how you feel. Like if it's, if it's a spirit, like I always tell people, if you're in your home and it feels like something warm and loving is coming, visiting you as a family member, mm. if you feel like it's cold and you feel sick, it's a ghost, usually a bad ghost or a demonic entity. So it's, it's fascinating because your body, everybody pretty much can pick it up when they feel like a heaviness that's, that's ghostly. Or mm. if it's really, if you're really sick, it's demonic. Yeah, and I used to do a lot of work uh, with my sound healer. Uh, we used to actually do a podcast together and she would always say to me that my grandmother is always here with me um, who, who passed and quite often I'll feel like I have this glowing light behind me and I know it's her and it's just it's like she's right behind you and so quite often I'll, she'll, she'll be there and um, I'll, I'll feel her glow. That's how she comes to me. <laughs> she's protecting you. Yeah, yeah. That's that's what she said as well. So it's a, it's a nice feeling to have because um, I actually lived in her house for a little while after she passed, and I, I swear to God, um, she would show up all the time. <laughs> oh, that's sweet though. That's nice. Yeah, yeah and that's nice. and they're not always with us all the time. They're going to show up when they want to show up. But there was there was different reasons that she probably was because you're very sensitive. Mm. And you've always had the gift for a long time, and so sometimes the loved ones are going to come in. They're going to be a a guide some way and just protect you in other ways. So um, there was a reason for that. Yeah. Apparently. Now you also, uh, as you've mentioned, help people through bereavement as well. Um, if people want to engage in some of your services, how can they do that? Uh, well, there's a couple of things that I do. I do do private sessions and I do them in my office, but I also do zoom and phone, but I also have um, 
regular every month, like medium events where I, you know, if they want to have like a demonstration and I try to read as many people as I can, I try not to have a lot of people more than maybe like 20, 30 people. So people have a better percentage of getting something. Um, but I also do bereavement and medium private bookings, like for groups, small groups. And that is like, I had one uh, a week ago with, um, and it all led from one of my medium events where a, a, a male was killed tragically in a car accident. Actually not try He was shot. And uh, it, 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 he came in at my medium event and the family decided to come back and get more closure on it. So I'll specifically channel the energy from that deceased loved one and say like their experiences, who was around them, what happened to them, but also give some healing and closure to the family. Like, I know you're doing this and that. And, you know, like their personality, if they swore, I have to swear because we know it's them. Yeah. <laughs> but it, a lot of times they'll laugh and it kind of gives them, a, it, it helps them a little bit. But then I say, in my work, it's not just being a medium or being a psychic. I really try to give them some takeaways. Like, this is how you're supposed to you try to talk to them, you know, when you leave here to keep the communication process going. I know you're not a medium, but they'll listen and they'll respond and they'll try to talk to you. So I always try to teach a little bit in my sessions, but I do a variety of things and people can just kind of contact my office and, and book, you know, a session through my office for whatever they need. All my descriptions are on my website and it's whatever they feel like they're drawn to what they need help with. Yeah. And I, I checked out your website and uh, I saw some of your services. And I was like, oh, I'm going to sign up for all of these. <laughs> <laughs> Um, now, you don't need to. You got you got your own juju oh, going. I know, but sometimes I just like someone else to do the work. Um, <laughs> um, now, while I've got you, um, I uh, love to ask guests um, what being ethical means to them. What does it mean to you? Well, to me, it means being honest and true to myself first. Uh, before you know, and and to everybody that comes to me, and being like real. Um, and you know, modest and honest. And it's really important to me. Like I actually wanted to, you know, I got the uh, trademark, the double vision medium. I actually was going to say the model medium at one point, like as, cause I try to be that model for my industry um, of the professional, of the compassionate person that cares and is, is, is forthright, but truthful. Mm-hmm. And, um, and that's what that means to me because I feel like in this, industry or anything that we are drawn to to do to help other people we have to be real with ourselves and we have to be real with our clients so that's what it means to me Mm. and I love that because you know as you said earlier there's so many people in the industry who who aren't quite legit and could take you for a bit of a ride so um when when you know you're into a good thing you know it (laughs) yeah exactly and that's sad because it does happen but I think it happens in every industry too but it's, it's especially when there are people that are hurting and they're grieving and then they just, you know, they don't know and they're on a whim and they're just picking somebody. And I hear it all the time, like they get scammed. So it's just, I feel bad. Mm. Um, so you're also an author. Um, tell us about your book. Okay. So I am the author of the book, Who Are You? Are You a Psychic? medium or other spiritual worker actually it's my second book but I put it out before my first book (laughs) because it was short to read and I had this feeling like hey there's more people out there like me like you are Mm. right um so like you you know you grew up your whole life feeling like you're different having all these spiritual experiences everybody thinks you're crazy you can't talk about it with your friends they're gonna think you're nuts you certainly like you always know things and I really felt very drawn to, I've got to tell people who they are. I've got to tell them like my experiences as a psychic, a medium, an angel worker, a Reiki master teacher, how I receive this information. Cause they're all different spiritual beings, mm. how I receive it, what senses I'm using. And so they can kind of walk through the experience with me and say, geez, I, I feel I can relate to this. This is uh, and then there are some exercises at the end of each chapter so they can see if they can quickly make those connections and evaluate, hey, I actually am these things. So whether it's just for their own, you know, acceptance and to basically say, I really am this person that this type of spiritual worker that everybody thought I was crazy or I am, but I want to go do something with it now. Because what happens is with me, like I 
had all this kind of stuff going on and I started taking classes, even though I knew I was gifted, but I wanted the validations, but I still didn't know who I was for a long time. Yeah. And then I realized I was all of them, which is, you know, I got the whole, you know, <laughs> I got the, I got the whole jackpot, I guess. But it, you know, it's very important to, because people start taking wrong classes, you know, or they think they're a medium, but they're really a psychic or they think they're a psychic, but they're really a medium. And then mm-hmm. they take all these classes and they find out if they spent thousands of dollars and, I felt like it was important just to put a book out from a professional's ex, uh, experience and, uh, you know, how I receive information. Yeah, and I think that's such a great idea, um, you know, to help people kind of get a greater understanding of, of what their talents are and how they can harness them as well because, um, you know, I think there's a lot more people nowadays becoming a little bit more woke and uh, understanding that we're all connected um, and, you know, it, it is the one consciousness. So if we can connect to that, I think, um, wow, the stuff that we can make happen in our lives is incredible. It's amazing. I'm going to tell you, I think most people have something. Mm. You know, I really do think we are, like you said, we're all connected and it's just such, you know, we, we all have something, whether, we, you know, we're a little bit more sensitive or we're an empath or something, but we all have something. I think a lot of people have something, but they're just afraid to open it up. And it's just our religious background and our upbringing that, oh, it's it's bad, it's bad. But, you know, look at Jesus was a, you know, healer. He was a prophet. What do you think we get our gifts from anyway? We're yeah. all children of God, you know, but people forget that part of it. They just think, oh, that's, you know, you're doing this, but it's, we're all children of God. So yeah. we're all connected. It all starts with us, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, now, if people want to get in touch with you, Lauren, how can they do that? Well, the easiest way is they could um, go to my website, which is um, mediumlaurenrobbins.com. Um, they can also connect me on Facebook, Medium Lauren Robbins, Lauren B. Robbins, which I have a Facebook page, and I try to post things about spirituality and do Facebook Lives where I can. But the easiest way is just my website, mediumlaurenrobbins.com. Amazing. Now, my last big question for you, what's the change you'd like to see in the world and how can we bring it to life? Well, I want more peace. I'd love to see that and have people be a little bit more courteous and kind to each other. But I think the biggest thing for me, I really would just like to see the change of people being much more spiritually aware and to realize that we have a greater, um, we have a greater purpose and there's you know, the spiritual world really wants to work with us, whether it's our loved ones or the angelic realm uh, or our guides, they are real. Um, Angels have been referenced in the Bible many times. Our loved ones are real and we just don't inspire it, but just don't know it till you lose somebody. Then all of a sudden you turn those little abilities back on and you start getting messages just to be embracing that we have a spiritual side to us so we can, we can heal and kind of learn something from it. Yeah, and we're so lucky that, uh, you know, people like you and I are there to guide people towards that as well. So um, one last question before I let you go, because you, you've you opened up something for me in your last comment. Um, I, um, and you no doubt get this too, um, numbers, um, the angel messages and the numbers, I get them every single day. You do? I do. I would not be surprised if you're not an earth angel. So that means that you are in physical form by run, but run by the angelic realm. So angels are the ones that are going to give you the numbers constantly, unless it's a loved one that was like their birthday at the time of passing. But um, you are getting guided by the angelic realm. Are you looking those numbers up? Oh, yeah, I have been. Yeah. But like every day it'll be um, like quite often it'll be one, 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 like it'll be 11, 11 um, Mm -hmm. a lot. Um, and then it'll be four, four, four. Um, the other day it was five, five, five. So like every time I look at the clock, it'll be that, or, you know, just, just in certain things, like it might be a bill or it might be an address. It'll be, the numbers will all be, you know, angelic numbers. And I'll, yeah, I see it all the time. I'm like, and I'll just sit there and I'll smile and go, yeah, I see you, you know? So that happens to me a lot. Well, that doesn't surprise me because you are trying to do something, you know, with your podcast and look at, look at the shirt, be the change. It's ironic. I was just thinking I have a bracelet that says that be the change, like be the change in the industry, be the change of like what people need to know, not like what you expect them to know. And 
Um, so I feel like what's happening, you know, that one, one, one is a huge number mm. and like, uh, that is actually about change. Did mm. you know that yeah. it's about, you know, making that choice to make a change for you. So I'm not like an expert in numbers, but I do know that one very well because I see it a lot myself and it's related to my niece that passed away. And that number came up quite a bit before and after her passing. However, like that is about all about change and making that decision. If you're going to go forward, or if you're going to stay back and sit in the old, you know, you know, uh, be stuck and not make any changes for yourself to go forward. So it's ironic if you're saying one, 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 especially with what you're trying to do. Mm, yeah. And uh, that's you're, what you're I'm being guided by the angels and they're saying, hey, pay attention. You might need to do a podcast about angels. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I know we'll I'm have one. to do that another segment. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's a whole other podcast, Lauren. <laughs> mm-hmm. I can't thank you enough for being a part of the Ethical Evolution. I have loved every single minute. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Joe. I really loved being on and I appreciate you inviting me. And so I'm excited. Thank you so much. It's nice meeting you. As an extra added bonus, after we stopped recording, Lauren offered to do a reading for me. So she tuned in and uh, told me all about what my future is going to be like and also connected with some of my family who have now passed. Um, This was an incredible experience, so I hope you enjoy this very special moment we shared. Okay, so we're going to do a little bit of reading. I just thought it would be kind of fun. Let's throw this in. And I just want I just want to ask you the story. I always tell people, don't tell me anything that's going on. I don't want to know anything. Just validate if it makes sense because it's really important for your validation and my validation that things make sense, okay? Mm-hmm. So um, I just want you to take a deep breath in and exhale. So I'm going to just ask for the white light protection during this connection session. May you always be protected by the white light of God. Thank you, amen. Okay, so um, I'm going to just kind of go off the cuff and see what I'm getting to you, but what happened to you tragically about three years ago? Is there any tragedies at all or separations for you about three years ago? Because that has changed things for you. I'm hearing three. Mm, Three. If it doesn't make sense, that's okay, but I'm hearing something. There's something about three for you. So either at the age of three or three years ago, there was a shift for you energetically. Uh, definitely there was a shift energetically for me three years ago. Um, kind and if you don't want to talk about it personally, something you don't have to, but it did kind of traumatize you and did give you a shift. Mm-hmm. Does that make any sense? Yep. You can just say yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So that did help raise your vibrational state because tragedy and trauma can raise your vibrational state to kind of develop at a faster rate. And even though you've always kind of had stuff going on. You've always been gifted since you were little. I know you were, you know, you're empathic, you're highly sensitive. You also have um, like the angelic gift. Does this make sense? Yep. You're getting the numbers, but you also like, you can read people like you read me. Yeah. Like before you even, before you even asked me to be on, you're like, we're synchronizing, let's do it. And I'm like, yep. And we just felt like this connection, but you can read people very easily and that's your gift. But that it's, it's, more been it's been more profound since the last three years. Does this make sense for your development process? Absolutely, yep. Okay, and you're hearing every day, mm-hmm. um, and you're receiving information, not just numbers, but you're actually being told what to do for the show. Does this make sense? Yep. Okay, so when you receive this information, it's, it's coming in very clearly and fast? Yep. Okay, are you writing it all down? Not always. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Well, I didn't know about that part, but I'm hearing write it down because this is going to, this is going to be huge. It's going to get even bigger for you or the podcast and other things that you are doing. And why do I feel like you're starting another mission or another podcast on a mission? There's a separate mission. And I know you just talked about some other things that were happening, but I'm not picking up. It's one of those. There's another mission that you're trying to do with a fundraiser for something. Does this make any Mm. sense with animals? Hmm. Not with animals, but why do I see animals around it? Kinda. Um don't know. That's okay. I always say hold it. If it doesn't make sense to you right now, that's okay. It might be something that you don't know what you're gonna be doing yet. Okay. <laughs> I actually, I actually see like I feel like it's gonna be in Africa or something and you're gonna be doing some kind of fundraiser. Are you gonna be making running 
getting money and, and uh, doing a fundraiser for some animals. And I see giraffes and I see Africa. So I have no idea why okay. but that's coming in. Would that relate to anything else that you're doing right now or anybody, you have any connections of anything with fundraisers over there? No. Okay. So I see with you, with your personal life, there's a partner, but it's going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And it's not stable. Is that correct? Uh, I don't have a partner. Okay. Is there a partner that's trying that, that you had back and forth that Mm. shut off? Yep. But was it going back and forth for a while before it ended? Because I feel like back and forth. Yeah. Okay. It, It was good that it ended because that was definitely not the right person. Not because the obvious you're not together, but I do feel like that was a blindsided situation on your end when it ended. Does this make sense? Yep. And I'm hearing like you didn't, that person would have stunted your growth, your spiritual growth. You wouldn't have been able to do what you're doing now. You would have never been allowed to do that. It was very controlling of a relationship. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yep. Okay. But you knew this. But you held on anyway because you were trying to heal yeah. this person. Yeah. So um, and so uh, the spiritual world is saying, like, thank God you didn't hold on to this person because it wouldn't have been able to heal you. You wouldn't have been able to do what you love to do, which is helping people through your podcast. Now, is there a child for you or was there a loss of a child? No. OK, no miscarriage, no other things at all, because no. I see a baby around you, a little girl. No. <laughs> No babies. <laughs> it would have been like seven years ago. Never been pregnant? Nope. That's very personal. No. There's something with like a, a, that would have been like a seven-year-old little girl right now, seven or eight. Anybody in your family? No. That you would know about? Okay. How about you, your, your partner? Anybody else? There's something about there's a lot of pain in the abdominal area. There was something that was going on there, like the person had a miscarriage or the other thing. No. Okay. That's all right. You can say no. I don't want you to, you know, agree. Just think on that one and let me know later on if that makes sense to you. But I definitely have that. It might be related to somebody else you know, but um, it's linked in somehow to you. Okay. So why do I get a lot of pressure with your head? It, it feels like it's, do you get a lot of headaches? Do you get a lot, a lot of messages constantly coming in? It feels like it's a vice, like it's in a vice. Yeah, I, I, I tend to get a lot of headaches. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. And this has been the last three years though, more so, right? Yeah. Okay. That has to do with the channeling. Yeah. Because you're receiving information at a very high rate. That's why. And I know I said that earlier, but that's one of the reasons that you feel like this pressure. There isn't anything wrong per se with your head, but it has to do with the the information that's coming into you. I still get this pain in my abdominal area. Was there anything else that happened to you in your abdominal area, like say seven to eight years ago? Any surgeries, any any other, anything else that was going on there? I feel it very clearly because I feel your pain. Mm, It would be longer than seven years ago. Okay. So was there anything that was going on there um, that you had like surgery or difficult without being personal, but I, yeah, yeah, I did, but it was probably more in my early twenties. Okay. Cause I get like this residual, like this pain there, but it felt like there was something about seven right. unless it happened in the month of July or whatever, when that happened, but I've got like a lot of pain there. Okay. Well, my birthday's on the seventh. Oh, is it? Mm. Okay, interesting, because I just kept on hearing seven, but then I was hearing, like, I got the pain in the abdominal area, so. Okay, we'll go, we're going to switch over. Like, is there anything you want to know psychically about your life or anything like that that you can ask me questions, but? Um, I guess I'd be interested uh, in two areas. Um, one, obviously, relationships, um, and two, uh, travel. Travel? Yeah, like, Will I eventually leave the country? (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to have a partner in in the next year. It's going to be like around November next year. 
So not exactly a full year, but it's going to be about 11 months from now. Look at 11. Here we go again. Oh, here we go. <laughs> I do feel like you'll meet online, unfortunately. I don't know if you are online. You do online dating, but I, do. I feel like you will meet online. And I'm not even trying to be putting a pun in there, but it is a person that's going to change your life. It's going to be the, be the change in your life. <laughs> very spiritually open, very, um, very sweet, very caring, beautiful, beautiful person, brown hair, long brown hair, and brown eyes, beautiful. And she's going to, female? I feel like it's a female. Yep. Okay. All right. And I feel like she's going to be about 30 minutes to an hour from you, so it's not bad. It's doable. Okay. And you'll get married. Wow. Okay. Probably relatively quick, like within the next. You're going to have to let me know because we're going to have to do a follow-up <laughs> yes. on that. Okay. <laughs> All right. Seriously. And I just feel like she's. She's perfect. There's there's nothing like you don't run away because she's too perfect, but she's perfect for you. She's going to be all over what you do for the podcast. Um, we'll be totally supportive. I feel like she has an M in her name, like Michelle or Maria. Um, and she's not from Australia. She's from someplace else, but she's living out in Australia. Okay. Australia. So. Um, but I, you'll have to definitely not let me know and don't run away. Cause she's perfect. Cause she's perfect in every way. Meaning like you're going to say what's wrong with her, you know, yeah, but yeah. there's nothing wrong with her at all. You're going to need to do some healing on her, mm. but she's good. She's good energy for you. So, yep. That's coming. That's coming. <laughs> next next November. Yeah, by no next by next November, but I think it's gonna be around more like the fall time, like October to November time period that you're gonna meet her. Okay. You'll meet other people in the meantime, but they're not gonna be the right people. She will be the right person. Um, okay. What was the other one? What was the other question you had? Uh travel. Sorry, that's not happening anytime soon. Damn. Unless you're going to Africa. Damn it. <laughs> it's <was> giraffes. <laughs> hmm. Why do I get Scotland? Does that make any sense? I don't know. Was that, that wasn't on your list, was it? It was not, no. Scotland. Uh, well, I got something about Scotland, though, seriously. Hmm. Interesting. That, that was never a place you wanted to go, right? No. Had no idea. No, no idea. Okay. Anyway, there's something about Scotland, unless that girl is coming from Scotland. I don't mm. know. But she is from another country. So I heard Scotland. Uh, where did you want to go? I can tell you if I feel like it's going to happen or not. Uh, well, I've been working towards the States next year. May, June, yes. Yeah, exactly. Those are the dates. Oh, my God. I was going to say, how did you know? But, you know, of course you All know. right, see, Scotland's got screwed up somehow. There's something with Scotland. I don't know. It's going to make sense to you later. There's something with Scotland. But I'm hearing May, June next year. Yes. And you will be here, girl. You will be here in the States. Oh, I Boston, was, New York. I just came from another conversation working out flight dates for May, June. I kid you not. Awesome. Kid you not. Don't know if I'll make it over to Boston, but uh, definitely LA. So, um mm-hmm. But yes, I would love to come over to your side of the country. <laughs> yes, it's it's wild over here, but you'll mm. like it. Yeah, you'll like it. I've uh, okay. I've been very addicted to Chicago Fire and you know all of those uh, Chicago oh franchises. Yeah, <laughs> that's one of my that's one of my favorite shows. Yeah, <laughs> and Chicago Med. I watch the it whole with lot. my husband on Wednesday nights. <laughs> um, mediumship wise, I do want to just do a couple of things and see if I can get things off the cuff for you. I feel like there's a fatherly figure that wants to talk to you and it does feel like he's like, but he didn't have a good comp. He didn't have a good relationship with you, this male, but he says he wants to speak to you and it feels like fatherly, but I do feel like 
I'm not sure if it's direct link to dad or step up, but this is a person you did not have a good relationship with. And it was separated for very young. But you like you did not have a good relationship with him, and he was not in your picture at all. And he's saying that he he apologizes for this. I feel like he's coughing, like mm. like there was something going on with the chest and his lungs, and like he <coughs> is making me want to cough. He said, "I'm really really sorry that I didn't have. I should have known better because it was all him that yeah. did not decided not to speak to you. It was not like you. You tried, but like he just wanted nothing. Like he separated himself from you." And it, you, this was like, you were on the younger side when this all came down. And like, I don't feel like you saw this person whatsoever. So it, it's either like dad or, or, or like, or grandfather, but it's definitely a fatherly figure. Which one would this mean to you? Because he's not saying who he is. It sounds like my father's father. <laughs> okay. And I'm sorry, because usually they'll tell me, but he's not saying who he is right now. There was like a, it was separated very early on, right? Yeah. With no relationship. Mm. And I don't think there was much of a relationship with, even with the father either. Is that true? Correct. Okay. Believe it or not, they come through and they're very apologetic. He said, not so much, he says, but he said he's, he's sorry mm. uh, for mm. his behavior. Something was wrong with his legs. He was very sickly. Mm. Anything going on with his legs? And what was going on with his chest? Uh, well, he was a smoker. Um, so I think that pretty much was his downfall. I don't remember anything with the legs, though. Okay. Would Charles mean anything to you or a C in his name or related to him in any way? No. There's something with a C. He's saying something with a C. I thought he was saying Charles. Okay. He just wanted to say he was sorry for his behavior. And that he pushed everybody away. Mm. And he was really alone. Like he was alone in life. Even if it was with somebody else, he was really alone. He just. Yeah. Mm -mm. That makes sense. And I'm hearing like a motherly voice going, hi, how are you? What's going on? How's my girl? It's just not your mother because your mother's still alive. This is the one, one that would have raised you was like a, another mother to you. Not, you know, that's obviously grandmother, but she's like, she raised you. She was very involved with your um, upbringing. She's like, how's my girl? But I heard right away, it's not, it's not mother because your mother is alive. She's saying she couldn't speak at the end. Does that make any sense? I feel like she couldn't process words. She couldn't speak. Her head feels very, very mm. full. It said her passing was very fast. Yeah. Yeah. It feels like it's cardiac to me. There's something going on with the chest or the heart. Heart. With her. Because I'm getting chest pains. Mm. But she was sick for a while. Yeah. When she went, like, it's almost like there wasn't a chance to say goodbye. She went like that. Like, it was just, I don't feel like there was any full warning. Is that correct? Uh, we kind of knew. Yeah. You knew she was going, but, like, it wasn't one of those things that you didn't have a chance to say goodbye. Do you have a chance? I, I did, yeah. Okay. There's something about she's saying quick at the end, quick at the end. I know she was sick, but she said quick at the end. So I don't know if you know what that meant, but. Yeah. She said, you were my girl. And I miss you. And everything kind of hurts in her body too, even though she had cardiac issues. There was something with her whole body also being very sore and painful. Does that make any sense? Yep. Arthritis. Yep. Okay. Because it's like tight. Yep. She's trying to say M in her name or M. Mm. Was there an M in her name at all? First or last? Um, mm. No. Or would she call you a nickname with an M at all? Me. No. It's okay. 
it's a lot sometimes for people to try to figure it out. That's okay. And it might make sense later. It might not, but she's saying something about an M. What was her, her well, what was your mom? What was her child's name? That's one of your parents. And what, you know, is there an M at all in the family that she's trying to relate to? Yeah, I would say it's my auntie who's also passed. Uh, her name was Margaret, uh, but she changed her name to Jenna. Okay. Mm. And that was always a bone of contention for her. <laughs> okay. And did she have a heart attack too? Oh, you mean like that's associated to her, is that lady, yeah. correct? Okay, yeah. got you. All right, because she was talking about the M. So uh, when they say that, it's usually in their name or maybe somebody else they're associating with. Okay, so uh, she just says she loves you. Is this the one that you think is around you with your back? Uh, yeah. In the light? Yeah. Because she just because she said that she's a guide, and then I was like, hmm, I wonder if she's the same one that you were talking about earlier, and she said she was a guide. So, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, very loving person, very healing person. And she said you get a lot of your gifts from her. She was always different. You always knew that she was very spiritually different. Yep. She said you should have been my daughter. Wow. And she said in a, in a past life, the roles were reversed. Huh. You always had this real special link with her. I'm not saying you weren't close to the parents, but she was really special to you. Yep. And she was the one that would encourage you to do everything you wanted to do mm -hmm. and not hold back. And it's because of her you have your podcast, too. Yeah. I'm here against all odds. I don't know if that means anything to you, but you're like you kind of gave up a lot of things to do what you're doing now. Yeah. Which, you know, makes sense, but like everything. You gave up a lot of things. Does that make sense? Yep. Relationships. Um, changes, choice, homes, uh, place you're living because you're like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to, and she's the backbone. She's the one that's giving you a lot of information that's coming to you about what to do for the podcast, by the way. Right. Okay. Yep. So I just heard this. It's not coming necessarily from your higher self. It's coming from her. Gotcha. So she's channeling information to you. <laughs> Does the top of, top of your head ever feel really warm? Yeah. When you're getting this information? Okay. That's where we receive information as mediums. Uh, or when we're receiving. So that would make sense because it's coming from her and it's coming from mediumship from your grandmother. Wow. And you saw her not too long ago. Did you see her in a dream recently? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm so often, she often in her house. She came through in a visitation then. Yeah. So they, they do it in a way that won't scare you. So she did a, a, visit, a visitation to you. So you said it was in her house you saw her? Mm. Oh, it's very interesting. I always tell people they'll put themselves in familiar places for you so you can identify them and you feel comfortable. Mm. Mm -hmm. And she said she was all right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything you want to ask her or say to her? Oh, gosh. Um, I, I can't think. <laughs> It's okay. It's all right. A lot of people don't expect that, mm -hmm. but um, I kind of do that just so they have that option. But um, she's like really cute. She's like, can you believe that I made it to the other side? Like I made it to the other side. <laughs> I'm very happy about that. I made it to the other side. Was there anything with her speaking at all though at the end? Why do I get like a speaking? She didn't have... Was there anything going on with the speech um, or s slowing down talking or anything like that? Feels no, like she's but she, she did lose her a lot of her sight towards the end. Okay. Something about it. Feels like something's different, like with her speech or the way I'm hearing it. She's funny. She's like, it's okay. You've done, you've done fine. <laughs> you did fine. <laughs> Thank you, Nana or Grandma. <laughs> but, yeah, she made it all the way to the other side, but she is one of your guys, and she's helping you a lot in your process and what you need to do. And she said, in two years, you're going to be all set. You're going to have that perfect person in your life. You're going to be in a bigger place. Your podcast is going to be right through the roof. And... That fundraiser with the giraffes 
<laughs> in Africa or something you're going to help promote is going to be doing really well by then too. Right. Okay. Any questions you want, or is there anybody quick link that you needed to talk to that you want me to see if I can connect to for you real quick? Cause I can do a quick link too sometimes if they're willing to talk to me, your loved ones. Um, I guess my grandfather on my mother's side, so my grandmother's husband, um, is another one that I'd be interested to connect with. I'm hearing a hello, how are you, what's going on? And he feels like he has kind of chubby cheeks a little bit. I don't know if that would make sense in the front. Or if there was something going on in the front, but he feels like his face is like little chubby cheeks. Was he bald? I just want to make sure I got the right guy. I, I ball a little bit bald with hair on the side and chubby cheeks. Is that no. would that be another grandfather figure? Because I was just asking for a grandfather. No. Okay, so I'm not sure who that person is. What's his first name? Uh, Percival. Well, that other guy's here too. I don't know who he is, but he's got he's he's somewhat related to you. This other man that you just called for, he feels like he's bigger. He feels like he's wider with his wide, he has a bigger chest, wide chest. Does this make sense? I wouldn't say he was a big guy, but he has a no, wide yeah, chest. Yep. Like strong. Yep. Very sweet. How are you, darling? Mm. What happened to his back or not being able to move in bed? There's something with that. He feels like he can't move. Was he stiff at the end or could not move at the end? Mm, no, it was his heart. Something. His heart as well. Okay, there's something with him. I just hope I got the right guy. I'm not sure. It's starting, I'm starting to, I think, dwindle down with my session. I've been working for a while tonight. But he just feels like he's stuck, like there's something with his lower back, like he's stuck in bed. So he wasn't like in bed for a long time. Uh, he 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 was sick quite a lot. Um, so it could possibly be that. Okay. I was not getting the heart, but doesn't mean that that wasn't happening and it wasn't him. But I got like the lower back and like he was, so he's in bed a lot. He said he had cardiac issues for quite some time. I know you said that he died of a heart attack, but he also did have known cardiac mm. issues, he said. Yeah. He's saying a good part of his life. Does that make sense? Yeah. And he's talking about the 18th. Does that make any sense? Did he pass 2018, 18 years ago? Were you eight, Were you 18? No. No, it doesn't, no connection to 18. Mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you on your side, I see all these little sparkling lights. I think your grandmother's around you over there in the <laughs> background. Really weird. But um, anyway, I think he's trying to make a connection. Is there anything you want to say to your grandfather? Um, I, I guess um, I'd like to know how he is. He said he's doing fine. He's not very happy how he passed. I guess I expected it to be like this, but he said, I'm good in general. I'm good. He's just being a, he, he processed, he went all the way to the other side. So he's, he's doing fine over there. He said he's very happy he's with her again. I was about to ask you that. <laughs> I don't know if she's happy that he's there, but he's happy that she's there. Does that make sense? Yep, totally. Yep. He was in love with her and she was like, get away from me. (laughs) (laughs) So I don't know what was going on with that. That's private information. But um, yeah, so they just wanted to come through and say hello. So I hope that was helpful a little bit to give you some 
a little taste of mediumship and a little bit about the psychic part, but you really do need to continue with your podcast. And I know that you're, you're, you know, you've got a lot going on and um, it's very successful, but just you're going to see it grow so much. And in the middle of all of that, even next year, you're going to have a wonderful relationship and I'm going to have to be interviewed by you and your, your girl. And, um, (laughs) You might have another wedding to go to. Mm -hmm. Yes. (laughs) Yes, exactly. You're going to have to invite me. I'll go over there. All right. You're on. (laughs) Let's make it happen. (laughs) Awesome. Thanks for listening to the Ethical Evolution Podcast. If you're ready to be the change and would love to work with me on finding your voice through spiritual coaching or creating your own podcast with impact, visit ethicalchangeagency.com. Welcome to the Reverie Channel, where entertainment knows no bounds. Live concerts, on-demand music, documentaries, and short films, all in stunning HD. Now on Roku TV, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire, immerse yourself from home. And on Android and iOS for those on the move. Support creators with crowdfunding donations. Fuel their creativity. Join us in shaping entertainment's future. The Reverie Channel, where every view, every donation matters. Welcome explorers of the human experience. This is Let's Talk Soul and I'm your host Claudia Monicelli. We're not afraid of the great mysteries of existence here. Soul versus consciousness, we're on it. Spirituality versus science, we've got that covered too. Join us in navigating these profound topics with wisdom, curiosity, and a dash of audacity. Whether you're a spiritual veteran or just starting your journey, Let's Talk Soul is your passport to the unknown. Let's Talk Soul, diving into the depths of the human spirit. Subscribe now wherever you get your podcasts. Electric Acid. Electric acid.